tell Rob earlier, I wanted to, do you, do you remember Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide? <laughs> yeah. I want to start the podcast like that, like, Ned Bigby here. <laughs> <laughs> Mike James here. Teaching you how to survive school. Also, is, where's Octor? Is he not coming tonight? I haven't heard from him. Apparently on Snapchat, Rob saw that he was at a, like, Cubs game or something. Uh-huh. I didn't hear from him, but I don't know. Because okay. I know that was just a thing. Well, I don't know. Anyway, uh, welcome back to the NFG Podcast. Uh, I am Mike James from Not French Gaming, the channel you are watching right now. And with me, I have three very special guests. Uh, they'll introduce themselves in order of uh, you. Oh, come on. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I wasn't even ready. Give me I'm a good Kenny. one. I'm Kenny. I am Kenny. Great. Uh, you. <laughs> I'm Brian, and I like to do stuff with butts. Great. And very special guest, you. Yay! <laughs> I'm Rob. I'm the non-official uh, not Frencher. Exactly. And for the precisely two of you who are probably sitting in this room who have watched all not French videos, you probably heard us talk about Rob before. He's a good friend of ours. And, uh, I don't know very about good, but Yeah, good is definitely He's, <laughs> he's somebody we stretchy. know. Yeah, uh, yeah. I thought you just found him off the streets. Well, he lives on the street, sure. That's, that's where we know him from. Hey, you don't get to talk. You're not on the circle drive, bro. All right, whatever. Yeah. What are you even doing here? <laughs> hey, you skyline hold on, thug. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We have Octar here. He's on the other end. Octar is not we here. We don't have okay, Octar so. here. to shake. I guess he's here in spirit. Octar's farts just kind of linger in my room. <laughs> He's always with us. Anyway, uh, we've got quite a few topics we want to cover today. Um, I think the first one we can jump into, though, we're kind of talking about integrity, mostly with game developers, but we'll kind of branch out from there. But uh, did you want to start talking about stuff like uh, microtransactions and situations like that? Yeah, I think one thing that I noticed that's happening too much in video games, at least in the past... I don't know, five years, is that video game developers seem to be putting out a lot of video games that aren't complete. And then you they charge you the 60 bucks, so you buy a game, and then you play it for six or eight hours, and then all of a sudden you got to pay fifteen ninety nine to get another two hours. Mm -hmm. And why couldn't you just give us this the complete amount of content to begin with? Well, I don't understand why that's become such a prevalent thing now. Because there was a point in time where you would get a full game, you know, beginning to end, you'd have all the content, and then any expansion packs or DLC that comes off of that is usually side stories. Like a good example is Oblivion. Uh, you know, you'd have something like Shivering Isles, which I think is a great DLC. Exactly. But I mean, it, it's extra content. It's not part of the original game that was missing. Exactly. Because the Shivering Isles, you could you could play Oblivion and not ever have to worry about Shivering Isles or the other one in Nights of Nine. Instead, it was their own story, their own standalone thing. Right, it's not game content that they hid behind a paywall. It's just, you know, extra stuff exactly. if you want it there. I don't know what exactly happened that game developers decided to block off parts of their games and then make you pay for that. Well, I think a big reason why a lot of developers are going this way is because most of these games are serious games, of course, and they make this really good first game and get all of this attention to the game and get fans attached to it, myself for Call of Duty, Brian for Assassin's Creed. We love the game yeah. so much, we're obviously going to buy the next one, and they know it, so they're like, well, I'm just going to do, do not, all this Do you not feel like that, that's like kind of a gyp to you? I do in certain ways, but I could defend myself. I don't know if we're at that part yet, but... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I haven't had enough time to think. <laughs> but it'll get there. Like, like well, I, don't, I don't know. Personally, when I look at... Uh, when a video game developer, uh, Assassin's Creed, for example, okay, um, just because they kind of fall in that category of uh, not necessarily RPG, but kind of have some of those RPG elements. It's yeah. a lot more story heavy than, let's say, Call of Duty. Sure. Call of Duty is sure. more of, like you could say guns and yeah. extra skins and stuff like that. It's not you're really not really paying for much more credibility to, to the uh, extra yeah. storyline. Besides, like maps. Whereas like Assassin's Creed, it's a little bit different because usually it's uh, extra storyline or something like that. You're you're paying this extra money to get a game that's not entirely complete. So you pay fifteen bucks for this DLC, you pay fifteen bucks for this DLC. I feel like it's just to bypass not getting pre-orders anymore. Mm -hmm. 
because that used to that used to be a big thing. That like ten years ago, everybody used to get pre-orders, and they then go. they started throwing in extra stuff. Like, oh yeah, here's a you know poorly painted planchet of you know crap that you know we yeah. probably paid five bucks for, and then some you know. Sorry, Asian kid. <laughs> you know, painted it. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 hold on. Just real quick. Were you saying, I'm sorry, I'm about to say Asian kid, or were you saying some sorry Asian kid? Because <laughs> there's a big difference. A little bit of both. All right. <laughs> I, I totally agree with you on that one. Because, like, with pre or at least pre orders nowadays, like, what they'll do is be like, okay, here, pick up this game, and we'll give you all this nice shit. And they make it feel like it's exclusive. But then, you know, three, four months later, they'll fucking just release it for everyone else to get to. And then you lose that specialness. And then with me, though, the, the go on what you were saying, with, like, Assassin's Creed, like, I love the series of death. It's tattooed on me. Um, but it's just, like... You got the whole series tattooed on you? No, just the, the whole series. story. <laughs> just, just the Every single game. game. Um, but no, it's just, like... I was going to say, Brian, that's really intense. Uh, at, least, at least with, like... Uh, like, we did a little video about Syndicate, which I yeah. love it. Um, still do. Um, but I, um, I kind of agree, yeah, they're starting to do that little stuff where it's, like, at least for Unity... Um, they they release an unfinished game. I don't know why. You, you can say that oh they were rushed or all this, but if you're rushed, at least like say like here I'm gonna jump now game to Destiny like Destiny they lost their writer, so they had to start all over and all that stuff. So what they did they rushed their game. They made a shit story, and then they they just said oh we're just gonna fix it with the DLC. Well if you know that you lost your writer and you need to still fix it, why not just delay it? See that's I'd rather you that's delay a big it. thing like. Companies are so down to the bottom line, like, we got to get it we out at this it. set date. Yeah. It's like, gamers don't care. Like, yeah, sure, they're going to be disappointed when, oh, you're not releasing it yet? You know what? I rather... think it's going to be a better game. <laughs> exactly. I don't, know, I don't know about you guys, but I'd rather play four hours of a really good game than six hours of an incomplete game. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, well, no, I, I think agree. everyone's in agreement with that, but, like, I was kind of talking with Rob earlier. I think the industry has changed a whole lot now because every single game company has to try to, like, clamor for your attention because there's a billion games out there, and now more people are buying more games. It's not like when we were kids and you can, you know, you had, you know, three games that you played, <laughs> and that was pretty much it. Now you just buy games like this and this and this, and... There's so many out there, you gotta like decide, like, oh, well, maybe I won't buy that one. Mm -hmm. So, while I agree, I'd much rather wait for a game to be completed. It seems like game companies are saying, like, if we don't start releasing this soon, we're losing out on money and, you know, potential profits, which is kind of the end all be all for these yeah. companies. I mean, they're, they're making money. That's the essential. Essentially, what they're trying to do. Yeah. yeah, but you have you have companies like EA who they'll put out a game and then, you know, like Sims for example. You know, we all know Sims, right? Yeah. <laughs> I know Sims. Uh, obviously, he's okay. a very nice man. <laughs> you know, you have a game like Sims Four, and you compare it to, to that to Sims Three, and when you look at Sims Four, it's missing the like massive chunks that yeah. were just included in Sims 3 and then our snippet DLC packs that are like you know 20 15 10 mm -hmm. bucks and it's just released over time and and that's how they justify them fixing their game yeah, yeah. it's like cuz like how's that how's that what's oh, the integrity I, I, to your your player base oh, I totally agree cuz like going from like Sims 1 okay it was okay and then Sims 2 it was 10 times better than the first one 3 10 times even better then you get the 4 it's like what happened yeah, what, you know, why is the why is half the game missing? Exactly. Yeah, I totally agree with you on that. And then and then they'll charge you another one hundred and eighty bucks to get all the content just to fix what they did. Yeah, even though and uh, like I, I was reading uh, about Destiny earlier mm -hmm. about this uh, new expansion, uh, the Fallen King. So Taken King, Taken King, Taken King. Taken King. Yeah. Taken King. yeah, and how what they took out like a couple of the uh, different scenario packs that kind of came with it. Mm -hmm. And then started to kind of re-release that stuff as augmented yep. pay-for kind of experience, even though it was originally in the game. Why would you take that out? Why would you take that away from your player base and then put it back in for them to pay for? Yeah, see, well, a funny thing is because I have two friends who are hardcore Destiny Oh, God, friends. he has two friends? Um, I have two friends. <laughs> only two friends. Um, like, the, these two guys I talked to on PlayStation, they love Destiny to death, and I'm sure they're going to hear this, so hi, guys. Um, they, they love Destiny to death, but the thing is, like, and I tell them, like, guys, you know this isn't a good game, but their defense is, oh, it's made by Bungie, it's made by Halo, that's great. 
They made Halo, okay? They did a good job, but that does not justify for what they did right now. The game is See, uncomplete. And that's, and that's, that's exactly what we, issue we mean by integrity. Exactly. Yes. You would think, oh, this is a great game developer, so the game's got to be good. Exactly, yeah. But, but that's no, not they the case. Release a piece of crap. Oh, no, that's not... That's exactly. And, and it's funny because my friend Mo is now seeing the issues. He sees the problems with Destiny. But but the thing is, like, he's still holding on to it because it's made by Bungie. And, like, you need to let that go. It is a failing game. The game has lost so many people. Uh, Bungie has uh, debated on, I think, two or three times to shut down their servers because they're doing bad. But what they're justifying because they're shutting down, they're saying, oh, we're going to make Destiny 2. Really? Come uh, on. How is, that, how is that any better? Exactly. It's just, it, it kills me. And I'm trying to, so hard to get them out of Destiny. But, and, and, I mean, there's tons of other games out there. And... Just to shift to you for a minute, just because it's, uh, I feel like we've talked about a little bit of the content there that, or lack thereof from a lot of the major developers. <laughs> How do you, Kenny, feel about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, here it <he> comes. <laughs> about like shooter type games like Call of Duty or Battlefront or Battlefield. That's, mm. that's the other one, right? I, I'm, I, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You're good, you're good. Don't worry. They, they're all shooters, whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, we'll get to Battlefront at some point. How do you feel about Battlefield being one of those games where, I know, what, what was the one where they released it? Hardline. You could buy better guns with real cash. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear about that. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you could buy... Like better guns that like people would actually have to har- like work like forty something hours to get. That's a thing. Yeah, Holy but you could just shit. straight out flat out buy them. I don't know about that. I don't know what game is that for. Is it that was Battlefield? I don't remember what game, oh, but I remember man. hearing something. That's about a thing. That. I'm not <laughs> sure about that. Um, but obviously, pay to win is retarded. Oh, and there's exactly, there's yeah. there's elements of that in Call of Duty. Like you get these random crates that you could get weapons from and i think it's absolutely garbage Mm -hmm. because you could buy crates essentially Mm -hmm. it's kind of like csgo but that doesn't make your guns any better just skins but it's like you get these really good guns in these crates and you could just pay money to get them or you could be like me and i'm like i'm not gonna pay to get these Mm -hmm. and never have i'm just gonna use my natural ability to be better than everybody else exactly we get it kenny exactly (laughs) you know (laughs) it's actually funny because it's the same thing that halo 5 actually did because i've been playing that one a lot where they have this new thing where you get these things called rec packs and there you unlock armor weapons and how they do it now is for you to use this gun you need like you need these cards to actually activate the gun now they get those, you get them in rec packs. So you can either work your ass off to get the points to get the rec packs, or you just can just buy put them. buy and fucking get rec packs. And I mean, I think that's a little bit different. I don't think it's quite pay to win. Because what? obviously, everything that you're getting in the game, you can still do just as well as yes. other people that have those certain weapons. Or yeah, packs. if you have 40 or 80 hours to sacrifice to do that. But Yeah, you, but it's but not like might. these weapons are going to make you better than everyone else actually it's not you're not gonna win if you have this stuff. well actually from those rec packs you're buying the top of line and they okay give that's, you, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, hell yeah, 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 yeah. No, when you buy the rec packs they give you the legendary and rare well and i know and i know, I know dead shit. space 3 was pretty notorious for having that crafting system in it and then but you could pay right off the back just that for 15.99 to get you know the best gun in the game so you could bypass <laughs> Like the all difficulty? The, well, yeah, and, and like I said, I get why they do it. It's just a money grabbing thing. But right. I was gonna say that's a fundamental design flaw. If you're purposely making a really tedious, lengthy way to get a certain item, just so you'll make players buy it instead, because you know it's not fun to go and get the item the normal way. And if you're designing something in your game that isn't fun, then you're designing it wrong. Because exactly. video games should be fun, essentially. Oh, no, exactly, yeah. I mean, even if you have to put in time to get something, that's that's fine. That's you know, you should be playing the game and putting time into yeah, it. Yeah, like I'm okay for working for my eyes. Right, you're fine. But like if like grinding for it is just a tedious hassle that makes you want to stab your eyes out, then what's the point? Yeah. <laughs> it's not a game. No, it becomes a job. So well, that, that's a lot. I play games to get away from my job. Well that's, that's funny because that's like a lot of MMOs, like I saw a lot in Final Fantasy fourteen. It was so much grinding and yeah. dungeons and dungeons to get what you're a fucking wine for this you know piece of armor or weapon that you may not even get you like maybe a two percent of getting it but you're working your ass off doing the same dungeon doing the same shit over and over for like three four hours and you maybe just got it today or you're gonna have to wait another week to get it and see i think that that's um that's something blizzard has done pretty well over their lifetime is 
not allowing players to just buy things mm -hmm. out and out. Their crafting system, albeit now, is garbage. It's gone. It's ancillary. There's no real reason to craft anything anymore in World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. There's just not. Um, back in the day, there was. You know, you had, you had some pretty cool key pieces of gear. Some of it was, you know, pretty integral to higher end rating and stuff. Oh, like sure. That. I remember when I actually, like, invested into, like, blacksmithing and all that stuff and actually made decent Which items. I will go say, that Phantom Blade, it costs about 3,000 gold on the auction house right now. Doesn't, really? Yeah, oh, wow. it is it is really expensive right now and that's well, way old school. But then they basically, <laughs> uh, did they, I don't, I was here in the summer, but did they, like, basically get rid of, like, uh, the professions and stuff now or um, how does that work? Well, I, I thought I heard they basically just did away with it because, I mean, No, no. Actually, useless. they didn't um, because in Legion, there are actually profession quests that they're putting in. They're putting in quest lines for the professions. Oh, they I want to do the cooking ones. <laughs> <laughs> they got they got rid of the uh, buffs and stuff. Like, you remember how you, get, you used to get the stam buff yeah, for yeah. The, the mining or whatever, and then you get to use, you used to get the uh, crit buff for skinning. <clears throat> um, they got rid of that stuff, and the craftable items are just kind of eh. But I feel like that Blizzard have been pretty good about it making the game not be pay to win ever mm -hmm. like yeah you could get a new mount yeah it costs 15 bucks but you know what if you're gonna pay for it you're gonna pay for it and you didn't pay to be better than anybody else yeah. and same with league of legends you know you're paying for a new skin you're not paying to be better than me but yeah else. and paying yeah, for yeah. cosmetic things is fine i mean that's if that's something you want to put money into that's great i mean yeah. it doesn't change how the game's played it just changes yeah, I read some guy dumped like nine thousand dollars into buying uh, League of Legends skins. There's tons, and that's what we tons. call a mentally handicapped person. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless, that's his decision, yeah. and he should be able to do that. Yeah. as long as it doesn't, you know, affect his affect his gameplay against anybody else. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's the same thing with like fourteen. Like I, I won't lie, I bought a shit ton of stuff. Like I bought this one mount that's from uh, a god that I like called Odin, and bought his horse. But like I said, that's not helping me in any way. It's just. Oh, I look cool on this fucking horse, that's it. And that's okay, but, but you shouldn't have, you know, I shouldn't be able to pay to get the best weapon in the game or get a specific buff or get a Basically get a this. jump on someone else. Yeah, yeah, that shouldn't be a thing, even though it happens. It happens all the time in, in games. Like Warframe, for example. Oh, God. That game, you could, yeah, you could buy some of the best suits in that game and some of the best weapons right off the bat. You yeah, don't you have to be good at the game. You could no. just buy them. Yeah, you could buy, like, what, those prime stuff that they'll do, yeah. and the prime is basically the highest And that's And that's the thing, because you can't really get the primes without paying for them. Paying for it. or Because <laughs> they like are a, almost goddamn nigh impossible to achieve. Oh, God, yeah, and, you, like, and they don't release them until, like, maybe two months later, and then you can start working your ass off, but good luck. Oh, unless you have <laughs> 80,000 hours to dump <laughs> into it? Yeah. And you have really good luck to get the drop chances to get the materials you need and have, you know, it's not even yeah. worth it. It's See, nice. it's really funny, because I used to play a lot of Warframe back in the day, but... After I discovered it's a that, great game. Oh, honestly, it is. It is. it is. Like my favorite part was actually when you get this thing called the dojo, and you can actually like you know build like this cool looking base and fort. I I had fun doing that. But past that, I didn't want to do anything else. I didn't want to fucking. And that's the thing. It's like I feel like they literally. really ruined some of the game. Oh god, yeah. Because it was a good. It mechanically, it was a great game. It had a lot to offer. Mm -hmm. But there was too much pay to win involved yes. in it. It'd be to buy like what the platinum stuff to speed shit up or mm -hmm. to get certain gear and stuff. Yeah. It was a pain in the ass. I, I dumped too much money in Warframe. I'm I, you know, I, I got to... Because I played that game for a bit, and I got to a point where, like, if I really wanted to get anywhere, I would have to pay for something because I just wasn't getting anywhere. And I was like, okay, this is where I stopped playing this game then because I don't want to sink money into it. Either that or you need to have, like, a clan of friends playing the game, and it's like, well, either I have to badger my friends, and we all don't share the same taste in games, obviously. Kenny... You don't share the yeah, same I'm, taste. I'm branching out, okay? <laughs> I'm trying. You don't, you don't share the same taste that, that I have. I don't share the same taste that Brian has. We all play games f for different reasons. Mm -hmm. And it's okay, because it's all of our own personal opinions, but... Yeah. I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't I know. Agree. Making somebody feel like they're not going to be good enough at a game because they can't convince their friends to play cheapens the experience mm -hmm. one of my favorite games that i played in the last 10 years was uh kingdoms of amalur 
Oh, oh yeah. God, that game was so good. It had a great crafting system. It had good quests. There was tons and tons of material in the game, and especially from a very small developer. It was an awesome game. Oh, God, yeah. And I was super sad to hear that, like, oh, yeah, that, that's never, ever going to get an expansion. That's never going to get anything. Get a anything. sequel or anything, yeah. Oh, I played it so much on the 360. It was right? so it was good. Awesome it was amazing. Game. It was an awesome really game. game. And, it, and it was music by Grant Kirkhope, the guy who did Banjo-Kazooie. Really? There you yeah. go. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> really nice. That's dope. Yeah, no, like, it's really funny because, like, when nowadays whenever I play games, like, I'm tired of playing, like, you know, games you have to sink money to. I like to play you now games with intense storylines. Like, I've been waiting for the new Final Fantasy XV for God's fucking forever and now that i do it i'm excited i've been watching so much videos on it this game is gonna be fucking emotional and i'm not prepared for this game like at all like i'm gonna be breaking down i'm gonna be crying in my this room gonna be emotional did you oh, see that picture where they were sitting by the uh, car brian i feel right like you're not guess. prepared for a lot of things though. well <laughs> I, I don't even pay attention to my facebook but my cover page has been changing final fantasy a lot just, i don't I'm pay ex- attention i'm excited facebook, for it but, okay you know. but <laughs> we avoid your page like the plague it's that's awesome but no it's just like we love you but yeah, like, I'm, I'm more now, I'm more investing myself into story-driven games. Games that I'm looking for more, like, that has a good storyline and something that can keep me there for a while. Like, I'm excited for No Man's Sky, Final Fantasy, Overwatch is another one. You know, you it's know, kind it's of upsetting shooter. to me, like, how rare it is for, like, a, a game story to keep me, like, really into it. That's I, not, and especially a game that's not well-established already. Yeah, but I mean, like, even, like, when I was younger, I mean, a, a game storyline really, really pulled me in. I remember, just as a random example, when you had me play Mass Effect 2, do you remember I skipped school one day yes, just to did. play Mass you Effect 2? I, I was really into it. I, I really remember coming it. over, like, Mike, did you come to school? Like, yeah, dude, <laughs> what's the matter, Mike? Are you sick? I was like, no, I lied. I was just playing Mass <laughs> Effect. <laughs> but, I mean, it's, and there are tons of games with great stories out there, but just me personally, like, that's stories aren't, like, driving me as much as they used to. Now, like, I'm looking for fun gameplay. I totally yes. agree with you. Like, I can't remember the last game that I played for just the story. Right? Like, yeah. I want to play a game that's just fun to play. Like, I don't really... That's just kind I of how I don't care about the characters that much. I don't really care about this stuff. It's just fun to play, you know? Yeah. 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 Well, a lot of that comes from just bad storytelling. I mean, I feel like in the past well, decade, we've lost our chances of telling good stories. I mean, not to say that Final Fantasy VII was the greatest story ever written, but at least you friggin' cared about the characters. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't even know if it's... It, this is just me. I cried at a bunch of goddamn polygons, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but they were emotional polygons. Yes, exactly. And, uh, th- this isn't even an objective thing. This is just me it's personally. Like, there are a lot of games with good stories. I Like, take, for example, um, Bioshock Infinite. Oh, and I'm actually really into the game, and that I'm into the uh, characters too. But I still haven't beaten it because when I'm playing games now, it's usually like when I get home from work and I just want to sit down and just play a game mindlessly for a bit. So I don't really have the processing power to just sit there and like listen to the story and take it all in. So I don't end up playing a lot of these games with big intense stories because it's just it, not what I'm looking for. Well, right just, go ahead. Because I mean, when you're focusing on a game for a story, it's not just the actual playing of the game. You got to be mentally vested in it, right? Mm-hmm. And like you said, it requires sometimes some brain power, yeah. you just play a game just to relax. And yeah. I mean, that's why I play a lot of these competitive games because you just mm-hmm. zone out. There's nothing you need to focus on except for like physical. Yeah, like, this stuff. is just yeah. the you don't need to think plane, about yeah. oh, these characters are having conflicts with one another it's like i don't have time for that my brain's fried yeah well, yeah that's exactly how i am because like i have fallout 4 that's still i'm only like a couple percentages i haven't even touched the main story because i've been doing other shit but it's like i have fallout i have metal gear still waiting for me all i do now is get out get out get home and just start playing grand theft auto wait you haven't <laughs> touched metal gear 5 yeah I, I touched a bit of it but like i'm only on what mission 12 it's just i because when i get home it's like mike said i just want to relax so I, I I just get on jump there, on GTA there, or something. There was a big complaint with Metal Gear Five. Well, it's because again, it's not finished. A big chunk of it was yeah. cut. The ending was basically. Well, even cut. on top of that, like yeah. I and because Nick plays, he played a ton of Metal Gear Solid. 5. Yeah, sure. A ton of it. It was one of his favorite games here. The whole reason he stopped playing was because half his race, ra- you know, base got raided in a day. Oh, so oh, with the online stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. why would you force players to play online uh, to get stuff taken away from them? Like, why are you taking things away from players? You know, it's funny. I didn't even really, because uh, I was playing on PC, and PC didn't get, like, the online mechanics until later. 
Uh, so I haven't even, like, jumped into that aspect of the game, so I can't even really comment too much on it. But, like, I was under the impression that, like, you created, like, little sub-bases. I think they called them, like, uh, was it FOBs or something? I don't remember. But I, I, I didn't know if that, like, affected any of your main yeah, storyline base or anything. But yeah, like, like he, had a, he had a bunch of crap rated from him. He was just like, yeah, screw this game. I'm not, now he, he doesn't touch it anymore. Oh, wow. That's why I was he, like, playing on, like, PlayStation 4 or something, I said. Is why you uncheck the internet capabilities <laughs> and play on the offline mode like I do with Dark Souls when I don't feel like being invaded. You know, and that, that's the thing is like, I feel like a lot of video game developers are trying to. They're pushing online. Yeah, push online a little too much. You know, well, what? they're they're forcing you to play the way they want you to play it instead of you yeah. playing the way you, you know want what? Exactly. Video games have always been a, an interpersonal experience. I feel like. They like some of the best games have always just been personal experiences for you, the player. Not yeah, online. I, <laughs> I mean, I don't uh, think online's bad. No, 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 no. I think it's no, no, no. great. And that's it. Not, just depends on the game. Exactly. I mean, there's some games where they just try to force online capabilities in it. And it's like there's no reason to. But on the flip side, there's other games where it's perfect. You know, online is a big part of it. Mm-hmm. Like, one of the things, it's funny you said it, because the thing about the map is like Dragon Ball Z, Xenoverse, how they yeah. forced the onlineness. Yes, you can go solo, but they you had to play with people to get further, get stronger, and get better equipment. At least for at least for I PS4. never had to. I, oh, I, 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 I had played to. solo that entire game. Oh, I had Maybe to. Maybe you just sucked. I guess so. <laughs> but no, it's just, because uh, at least there are some parts, because like, um, where like I was trying to do the Broly shit, it was my first time, and I could not uh-huh. beat him. And I'm like, okay, well, he just you know, no, I, I won't lie, I, <laughs> yeah. I was very bad. Yeah. But it's just That's at least for me, like. I felt like it was forced, like with higher and harder missions, you right. had to go with friends. Well, I mean. But to be fair, you're right though. That game is like primarily based around online play, and that's kind of how they wanted you to play it. Yeah. So of course, as missions get like higher and leveled, you know, they're going to be harder, and I think they kind of expect you to play with you know other people. Yeah. But you don't have to. But yeah, I do get what you're saying. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um. <clears throat> no, I, well, Xenoverse is kind of a different thing because that, that game was kind of specifically designed around multiplayer aspects and that capabilities. But there are other games too where I feel like they just kind of shoehorn that stuff in, or even like weird, just adding in multiplayer modes for no reason. Like a good reason, a uh, good example is t- uh, Tomb Raider, uh, the 2013 one. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. yeah. 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 The that game's fantastic. Year. But it has, like, a multiplayer mode for no reason that, like, nobody plays. What do you it's just do in a multiplayer? I don't even know. <laughs> all, all, it's all, just all, there. All it was was you, just team You raid tombs together? together? And that's it's that's like, see, that's, 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 that's why even bother? It. See, they're trying to, like... You shouldn't have to shoehorn content in. To, yeah, they're trying to, make, to like, make feed it. off of Call of Duty. Right, like, yeah. Just oh, like everybody, Bioshock too. Everybody loves not, online not, versus Not each every other. game needs a PVP aspect. Exactly. It doesn't. No, no, it's, 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 well, I don't it's know, funny. Because that was my fire, Bioshock 2. Remember how pissed off I was when I saw they had a multiplayer thing? Oh, yeah. That pissed me off. Granted, the story was, uh, okay. But it's just, I'm like, why, why well, is see, there a multiplayer in Bioshock? And I know, I know you'll have a different, a different opinion on this, but that's how I felt about the Assassin's Creed games with their multiplayer stuff, too. Because that stuff never pulled me in. I was like, yeah. why is this even here? <laughs> I don't <laughs> care. Some of it was fun just going with friends, but past that, I agreed. It, it was unnecessary. Yeah. I could have I could have. Well, yeah, that. but did you just play online to troll people? No, I went um, on. Um, no, I went on. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> with my friends. No, so, I'll, sorry, Kenny, we don't all live under rocks. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. You, are you one of those internet trolls? Oh yeah. yeah no, no. Are like, you a denizen of 4chan? <laughs> you know, with Assassin's Creed multiplayer, guy. they just did it so where you can assassinate people, and then Unity, then it's like, oh, here you go, now you can play with your friends and not have to worry about you know going to matches. And then I just feel like that's Unity utterly redundant. Through. See, <laughs> see, Unity, I thought was a great concept. Here, here, here we're gonna give you an ability to assassinate with Unity. With other people. <laughs> what? <laughs> See, so what I say about assassinations, buddy, the more the merrier. No! <laughs> How is that? No! <laughs> That's no! God damn it! <laughs> Lee Harvey Oswald was the only one to kill JFK, okay? <laughs> We're going there. <laughs> <laughs> See, like, but you forget his clones, Rob. You forget his we're clones! Not, we're not talking about the grassy <laughs> They were everywhere! We are not talking about the grassy knoll right now. But you forgot about the flying bat person, Rob. You forgot about that. <laughs> Left that out of your little theory, didn't you? JFK was killed by a bat person. Bet you didn't know. No, he's killed by Catwoman. Well, so fine. Bad, so bad, bad. <laughs> <laughs> but the clones were there too. 
Nice. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> we derailed. Nice. We, we derailed. What were we were talking about? I forget. Anyway, <laughs> integrity. Seems like there's not much of it in the video game world no. these days. Yeah. And it's upsetting. Well, I mean, like, you know, it's... um. Well, one thing I thought was kind of funny, and actually I'm working on another Not For Views video right now that kind of mentions this stuff a little bit, but um, a lot of indie games have been doing pretty well lately. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think they've think made a lot of good decisions. That seems to be where the market's moving. Yeah. That's because of this integrity issue, I think, because all of these big developers are getting this reputation of, we just release a bunch of crap. Hey, fuck you, are buying you know what, you're going to buy the goddamn game, And all game these and we don't other care. developers are, and most of the developers are leaving from these big companies yeah. and doing their own thing. Well, and it's like... Well, we're gonna con- we're gonna go towards what the gamers like and give them a great game. Yeah. And there's so many good indie games right now, and it's awesome. Well, it's, yeah, I mean, there's great. a ton of shitty ones too. Well, yeah, yeah, but <laughs> well, see, that, that's what's great. There's so. But many I feel games. as far as far as like the ratio goes from indie games being good and bad, they're getting a lot better than they it used is a, to be. It is a better <laughs> ratio than AAA titles. Well, yeah, because AAA titles, and also just trying to do, like, what's good for the market. Like, at least for now, what I'm seeing in PlayStation, everything's a MOBA now. Everything has to be a MOBA, because MOBAs are doing good. Or, or it's like, just a reskin of the last game, exactly. just because they know itself. Is that, they're, 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 not, they're not listening to their people, they're just looking at, okay, this is getting us numbers. Let's just stay here. Instead of yeah. listening to their community and their fans and their audience. Well, see, I, I don't work with the game company. Company, so I can't say for sure, but it yeah. seems like a lot of the you know bigger game companies, it's just the suits making the decisions. You know, it's like this is what makes money. Let's do it this way. Whereas oh. a lot of you know indie developers, they're gamers who are passionate about games. You know, I mean the suits, so they know what they want. The suits so they make making what they the want, decisions. Which... That's the same thing that killed the Atari back in the day. I mean, you... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have we not learned since then? I don't know. Well, <laughs> it's really funny because I love Square Enix and I hate them at the same time because for a while they were doing good. They listened to their fans, they know what they wanted, and then they created the 13 storyline, and then they fell through, and now they're making it up with 15, which I'm glad about, but I love Square Enix to death, like, they're doing great with Kingdom Hearts 3, they're, I mean, Kingdom Hearts are making me cry, because I want Kingdom Hearts 3 so bad now, but... You and everybody else. Yes, it's just, <laughs> well, the thing is, is like, with, with Square Enix, I love them and hate them, because, they, how I put it, they, they, they listen to the fans, but when they find that one thing that their fans love, they stick to it and don't want to let go, and they hold on to it. And then when they see it's failing, they're like, "What did we do wrong?" And then, and then from there, when they when they, did, but they destroy themselves, they, they really need to back. realize that they haven't done anything wrong. Thirteen, that whole bullshit storyline that we just push over to the side. <laughs> um, we well, we know the whole thing about thirteen, yes, right? Hold on. Yes and no, <laughs> yes and no with that, but I mean, look at the entire lineage of Final Fantasy. Look at how many storylines there are, and look at how many of them are honestly just crap. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> you don't get 13 games plus because they have other games in their tag. Yeah, just total 64 right now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was a big ah. nerd right there. <laughs> but you, you, don't get that, you don't get that far and not produce a couple if not a bunch of games yeah. that just flat out the storylines are crap yeah well the, the thing is like what pisses me off most with them like okay the 13 the whole 13 was supposed to be one storyline like from 13 13 to enlightened return was supposed to be one whole story but they said no way let's just chop up into three games okay that's great but then you have you you they have the bad gameplay, the bad story. It is, it and is the fact that it's a hallway, <laughs> like that too. The, well. it's no, so it's a linear, linear, linear it's like, line. It's and, then, and, then they, and then they're doing the whole <laughs> remake of seven, which I'm so pumped about. And like, it kind of it kind of does get me worried because yes. they are chopping it out of the part. They're chopping the full part, and you pay <laughs> sixty bucks for each. Ah, ah. So that's that's a big thing when you take a game, especially when you're redoing a game. You sold this game before as a complete part. And now you're going to sell it as three different parts. No, four now. Four, four. whatever. Full price, $60. It'll so be it's a like, 70 game. I mean, if you, yeah. if you make it goddamn worth it, but they're just, I'm okay with it. They're just remaking it. Yeah, the, the, so how can you make it well, worth well, it? Well, you yeah. can add new content. And it are is, they adding new content? They, they are. They're, they're changing the whole gameplay, the whole visual effects, everything. That's like, not, the, con- the, the that's the not, that's like, not content, though. Well, yes, but... It, gameplay but, is not content. Yeah, yeah, but, but basically <laughs> they're saying, adding in a multiplayer mode. <laughs> well, so, 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 what I'm trying to say is that it's not the original FF7 that we know. It's not turn-based. It's not like, you know, here we go. You hit me, I hit you. Now it's, I'm going to go up and just... 
Yeah, but we've known that. Since <laughs> <laughs> that's why. Now he's going to be brass knuckles. <laughs> we, we've known that since launch. Uh, yeah. se- since they said that they were going to launch the title. <laughs> the thing is, though, is from it's like story from what like Kenny's saying, yeah. is are they adding more content to justify? The sixty dollar no, price yeah, tag. Not at all. That's why I'm pissed. That's <laughs> the problem. Like, sure, well, you can change how all the far gameplay. are we going to divvy it up? I mean, the the original game was four discs. Yes, and they're doing that, breaking all four storylines or discs into sixty dollars, which that's not fair. No, that's just no. stupid. No. Just yeah. because the amount of contents is there. I mean, and you're still going to get it like is, one. Disc I mean, from what I've seen, it graphically is so very impressive. Oh, it looks good. Yeah. Well, see, the thing is, like, and I'm I'm totally gonna kick myself for saying this, but I'm gonna buy the first disc, but that's it. Just because I want to see and how it's done. Don't lie. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> don't I'm going to buy all four of them. Just the Listen, first disc. You'll pay me a second. Don't even lie. No, I'm buying the whole. <laughs> Listen, I know I love Final <laughs> Fantasy, but I'm only buying the first disc. <laughs> 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 Brian, Brian, you're going to be that guy in the cloud wig with the stupid sword, the dumb pauldron, playing the game Listen, day one. <laughs> I got four different copies for every system just in case. Listen, my new love is Noctis from 15 now, okay? Cloud can go suck a dick. <laughs> <laughs> he hurt me. <laughs> I love him in Smash. Don't lie to us, Jesus. Brian, we know you too well. This okay. is abusive relationship 101. Buddy. <laughs> no, but it's just it just it broke my heart when I saw they did it. I'm like, Screen Enix, why? And especially why? since they're not adding new content to it, they're saving so much money there. Yeah, yeah. sure, they're investing more in the visual effects and the new gameplay. But because they're playing on the They don't need right new now. writers and stuff, so why are you charging us more for a game that you already made? It's because yeah. they're trying to write in the hope that, oh, the nostalgia people will really get into it. And that's stupid! <laughs> yeah. I, well, I'll still play it. I don't care. <laughs> See, you'll be there with you me, the problem. You'll be there with me. <laughs> exactly. Because, but that's the thing. Companies can do it because we will pay for we it. And I'm, it. I'm the victim of it. Victim or... I don't know. I fall, I do it too. Yeah. You're <laughs> you know, right there with us. It's like We're all the problem. They yeah. could get away with it. I, I mean, it's still... It's because, it we, let them get, it's because we will let, let them get away with it. Yeah. It's yeah. because we're video gamers and we like video games. So and we're we going to play them. Yeah. I, and that kind of... Brings me to the point of where do we draw the line? Over there. <laughs> <laughs> Over where? Over there. Over where? You know, there. I mean, I guess. I don't I, think I can make this anymore. Clearly. It kind of validates the point, but <laughs> I, that's the thing. It's where do you where do you draw the line? Like Batman Arkham Knight? Yeah. Yes. For the PC? Right. Yeah. Oh, God. Get buggy. Yeah. <laughs> we'll give you a bunch of refunds. Mm-hmm. Even people still now buying the game will get refunds if they buy it. Mm-hmm. Because it's still buggy as shit and it's not a playable game on the PC <laughs> PC the PC uh, PS4 version was good <laughs> I will say though they gave me every Arkham game for free because I had Arkham <laughs> did they really? <laughs> yeah all oh, of them wow. I got them all on, on yeah. Steam they just hey, gave you, them away. you know what but wow. they held themselves accountable and thank god they did because it shows some integrity as a uh, video game developer yeah. you know what we screwed up and here have this. Yeah, Rockstar but how could you screw up so bad? It was just it, they it was, gave it to a different studio to work on. Like uh, Rocksteady did not work on the PC port. Of yeah, them. They, they focused on the console. Okay. They had their the probably console. not even the B team, like the E <laughs> team work on it. I don't know, but you still have to see it as a screw up on their own. Oh, it, 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 it is. Oh, it was. It, it, They're held the, accountable. But the thing yeah. is, they took responsibility. for Which is good. Right. And yes. most people just be like, well, we'll we'll fix it in a and, patch that you have to. And pay I'll tell you what, they did something that I don't think I've ever seen before, and I will probably. Not see Hardly again at least for a long time. Yeah. They took it off the market. They know, took the game off and yeah. said, "You're not going to buy it in this state." Like, yeah, but that's a ballsy move. Yeah, but then they re-released it after they fixed it. Well, after they, they, yeah. they, well, they had yeah. a bunch of patches. Yeah. But. Well, it's like uh, what was it? Tony Hawk's Pro Skater <laughs> Five. Oh, God. I've heard many. Oh, I've joke. heard so many stories. It was, it was the, when it released. It was installed. Four point six gigs. The first patch. Was seven point seven. How do, how do you justify that well, as a video game developer releasing a game and the first patch is almost twice the fucking size? Well, see, the funny thing is, I had no idea that the Hawk game was even coming out. I had no idea. Like, it's so right under. Yeah. Well, the thing that interests me, and I don't know, like, I want to know how many copies of that sold. Oh like, yeah, did I, it do I well? Well, I, I, guess I, I don't know. It probably not. Because, but I can tell how much preload copies we have at GameStop. Game game <laughs> but I think that is definitely a nostalgia. Yes. If oh, you yeah, bought nostalgia. that game, it was because of nostalgia. Right. There's yeah. no other reason why you would buy it because that game nowadays is crap. Like. Mm-hmm. 
pro skate is crap now. There's nothing to do. It's a great game, but there's nothing to do. Right. And Kenny br- kind of brings up a, a, an interesting point here. Nostalgia. What does that do for us as gamers? It makes us have to buy four discs. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> Curse my fond childhood memories. <laughs> They cost me so much money. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I mean, but how far are we willing to justify our nostalgia? How far are we willing to put on the rose tinted goggles, look back and go, yeah, that was one of the greatest games ever made. And if they made a remake, I'd probably buy it. Yeah, no, no, whatever. Yeah. Like, eh. It's and like, it's, <laughs> in the Blizzard community, in, in World of Warcraft, you see this especially. You see guys all the time constantly talking about Vanilla WoW was the best. It was the best. It was the greatest game ever made. Da 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 da. Our Burning Crusade was the greatest game ever made. Da 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 da. Everybody puts on the rose tinted goggles and goes, you know what? That was the best that game will ever be. Even though since then, it's 10 years later and they're still producing content and it's better than it ever has been. The game mechanically works much better. I mean, you look at the original Vanilla WoW and you look at the game was. The mechanics were hard, and I even told you the story earlier that they didn't even put in the mechanics in a raid to actually affect, Yeah, you know, the, the boss itself didn't actually do damage to you as a player. No, it did damage to some invisible bunny rabbit that they put in the game. <laughs> and the players only died because of the mechanic that was put in that raid. So the boss isn't killing you, the mechanic is killing you. Yeah, it's and some weird ass workaround. Yeah, like, and yeah. then half the specs in the in the original game were unplayable, but everybody puts on this ro- those rose tinted goggles and goes, "That was the greatest game ever." But man, that's just like human nature, though. You know, it's funny because like we see it most often, and it's like very prevalent in gaming culture. But it's it's not just gamers. Everybody has stuff that they oh know, yeah your your, love your from parents go you, you know, know what. The, our, Our music, music was the better. Best. Yeah, yeah, exactly. this yeah. was be- that's just how life. You know, to some is. certain that's extent, I will are. agree with them in some cases. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it, it, that's that, that's not how the greatest band ever. Just saying, people <laughs> function and like the video game industry. To their credit, they take full advantage of it because they know that you know they um, know people want to play games that they love. And children. it was just announced that they're making a they're doing a remake of Modern Warfare Two. Yeah, and I I'll still that. I'll still yeah. say that is my favorite game. It was a great game. Obviously, but I, the next, the, next, the, next, the next games, the mechanics are gonna are better. The current game, sure. The, um, are they doing another <laughs> one too? Like a new Call of Duty, like Infinite Warfare. Well, of whatever? course they're doing another one. It's yeah, year yeah. release. Yeah, yeah. obviously. No, 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 Call of Duty okay. Giraffe Warfare. You well, no, fight on giraffes. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, the, the only reason why I say is because uh, apparently, like PlayStation Four leaked the title by accident by putting it in their like store by accident, and then they took it off like a day later. Yeah, they did something, something like that. Like that. I, I I think that I think that was on purpose. But the thing like, is, it's not a big deal because everybody knows there's another game coming. And but, obviously, but, I know they're cool. At least in my yeah. Own. Like, no one's gonna be surprised. Well, no see, in my eyes, that's why. Cool, I'm surprised. Though. Like, I find that at least in my eyes, I think it says like, okay, I can I can just wait for the next year if I don't like this <laughs> version. Well, no, 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 I'm being serious because like I'm gonna jump on this. Like people, like you have people who are the Modern Warfare fans or the people that are the Black Ops fans. Sure. Where they know, okay, skip this year, mm. my year comes. It's kind of like that. Here's the thing that I think about like Call of Duty players. What's the fucking minutes are stupid. I think <laughs> Sorry. At, every game that they play, people still go to those. Oh my god, fucking. Lines are out the door. Oh my god. And they're all both like, oh yeah, Call of Duty, yeah! yeah. Sorry, Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all a bunch of losers, oh and I god. hate them. Go on, Kenny. Everybody hates Call of Duty. You get a little bit of hate here, bro. Sorry. That's fine. I get, I get it all the time. I thought I was going to go hard on Brian tonight, but... Uh, <laughs> it's, it's cool, okay? I'll defend myself now. <laughs> this so, is so I, I, said this, I said this in the last podcast. I don't see Call of Duty as necessarily a game that... I see it more as, like, a skill that I like and a subscription. I don't see it as buying per game. It's a subscription. Because the next game that comes out, it's the same thing. Little tiny tweaks, it's a subscription fee. It's a $60 a year subscription I still play World of Warcraft. Didn't you also also get irritated with Advanced Warfare because they tried to do a Halo thing? I I I thought you said you didn't like that. Halo thing... It, like with the armor, the super jumping. Oh and well, that type of I shit. mean, I thought that was great actually because oh, okay. they're. I they, thought you were against it. Well, I didn't like it. Okay. But they're changing the game. Yeah, they so tried something. It's though. the same thing. It's but they're changing it. Like now there's X, Y, and Z accesses. 
And to a shooter, that's crazy. Like, this is completely different. It's the same, like, you guys look at it, that's the same exact game. But to me, I'm seeing, like, there's so many more variables now. Someone could be way over there. I have to look up there. <laughs> See, but that, that, I've never had to look up there before. <laughs> that, no, exactly. That's the thing. And, and that, that gets me excited. I didn't like the game very much, but it was cool. Was right, like, yeah. I've and never that, seen this much change in a Call of Duty game. And that's, and that's the thing. A, a lot of people don't look at it, like, the way you do. Exactly. A lot yeah. of people go, oh, I see change and I don't like it. Mm. And the changes could be minute in most parts, but then you have a lot of your hardcore base going, oh, yeah, this is awful, we don't like this, da-da-da-da-da. But Stick then the people that just have. bought the game going, oh, dude, this is awesome, I love this. Uh-huh. Yeah, because that was a And lot. then what happens? Because now you're producing a game for two different player bases. Totally, right. yeah, because that was a lot of the thing that I heard from a game sub. Because uh, people come in saying they're ripping on the bow, how they don't like how how there's a bow and arrow now in Call of Duty. They find it cheap and unnecessary. Oh, yeah, I mean all that that happens. Yeah, there's stupid weapons and stuff. But okay. if you play it at a certain level, I mean not to toot my own horn, but I play it pretty competitively. I'll play with people that don't use that crap stuff or it's banned. You can't use Kenny's it. Kenny's my hero. So <laughs> it's like, I mean, I play play it strictly for the. Com- competition that's mm-hmm. why i play the game my favorite person to run on into online and i'm gonna say it <laughs> and i'm sorry i'm sorry is brian oh god <laughs> okay <laughs> the invincible idiot <laughs> <laughs> the guy sucks at the game for the most part but does, just doesn't die and somehow gets all the goddamn kills for some fucking reason and you can't you can't beat him. You can't develop a tactic to beat the invincible idiot. Because he's not playing like he should be playing. Why are you playing that way? You that's, shouldn't do that. That's the genius of it. You can never tell what he's going to do next. How did he get 15 kills? How am I dead? He was walking backwards the whole time. I'd say that's a lot of being Halo 5. I'm the idiot who tries to get a tank inside of a small building. And maybe that's why I said I'm sorry, Brian, but this is why I'm saying it. You... <laughs> For some reason, I don't know why, but every time I, I see one of those people online, I just think, the invincible idiot is Brian. <laughs> <laughs> he will go through life <laughs> being successful, even though he's a massive fuck-up. What? <laughs> 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 and I love you. I love you too, pal. And you will be successful. I hope. <laughs> but you're an idiot. <laughs> yeah. It's not like it's not like Kenny where he admits his fault. <laughs> it's not like Kenny. Kenny will never be successful. He will die young. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. I appreciate it. <laughs> hey, my life's already over. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> wow. I'm getting real on yeah, that. Yeah, getting podcast. real right there. You're welcome. <laughs> that's why we brought you on, buddy. But, but this, this, this is the thing. It's like you have... Uh, Invincible <laughs> idiot. <laughs> you have the hardcore PvPers like Kenny who will develop a strategy to de- defend against campers, snipers, all sorts of setups. And then you have Brian. <laughs> The guy just runs around with doozies and just shoots everybody and gets the best K to D ratio. And then you have Kenny getting all pissed off because he practices hard. <laughs> well, the thing is, if Brian, if Brian played me, I'm destroying. So there's, there's no worries there. <laughs> Let's just dispel this rumor that he had any sort of chance against me. He was yeah, not. Yeah. Let, let us be honest, there, there's a video on our channel where Kenny just destroys Yeah, yeah there, there's a video proof. 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 <laughs> but no, but... I, I know what Rob's getting at, um, but it's really fun because nowadays, now, whenever I'm playing shooters, I'm the medic of the team. <laughs> I'm like, I'll just heal you. <laughs> I'll put a bandaid on you real good. <laughs> like, oh that's get God, out there, no. champ. I couldn't think about Brian being a healer. I'm a good one, too. I make sure you're good and have more than what you need. He's running around with a bone saw like, who needs help? <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Brian, are you telling me are you're... You're the classic example of Kenny's the tank. <laughs> and I'm the white mage. No. Brian, you're the tank's girlfriend that the tank forced <laughs> to play healer. 
Yep. Yep. That, that's because you're right. not good enough to play the DPS. <laughs> no, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Now we step on toes here. My Dragoon in 14 is good. <laughs> I'm retarded on that DPS. Uh huh. I break down my tanks. Sure. Sure. No, but no, it's just. It's no, because like when it comes to competitive just now, I don't like going out there now and just doing. I'm just. I'm more of a supporter. You don't like working hard? No, it's just. <laughs> well, I don't like putting in effort, you see. Well, no, well, no, it's not necessarily that, because it's more of like, okay, if, like, if I know my, like, I have Kenny in my team, I know, like, okay. You just he, like to feed off his honor kills. Well, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 not even that. It's just more like, like, if Kenny's doing really good, I'm like, okay, he clearly has this going. He, we're fine. Let me just help him. Let me just support him. Let me give him ammo. Let me heal him or whatever. That's what I'm doing now. I'm just more the guy who's, I know I have the good players. I'm just going to make sure they keep doing good. So that's just more what I'm doing now. So I'm supporting that by giving them ammo or help. You know what? And that's actually, that's a, that's something I would love to see more in video games is more support classes mm -hmm. as far as like the traditional style of like MMOs and uh, RPGs and, and anything like that that allows people to kind of be able to su play support classes is to see more support classes. Yes. In or original WoW, you had classes that you could multi-spec into to be support classes. Yeah, I could do a little bit of DPS. I can do a little bit of healing. I'm not great at either, but you know what? This is my niche, and I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. And Can I just say I've always really respected people who play support classes because I never had any fun playing as like, I know, a like, when you play, like, TF2 or something, <laughs> yeah. you're never going to pick the healer, but yeah, there I, are I don't still like those, those few people yeah, the, that are going to pick healer. And, and I love them because they're needed. They're I definitely know, needed, I but mean, it's just never been fun for me. I just I like playing aggressively. If you add stuff to that in certain games, I think that could change them, like... I'm hoping they do something like that to Call of Duty. I think they would change the game well, so much. It would be risky, of yeah. course. But well, see, and that's why I'm so excited for like cool. Overwatch because Overwatch is giving you that aspect of like give your healers, your supports, and your main people. Like Overwatch looks dope. Yeah, because yeah. like, <laughs> you, you, you have your characters like Genji, who's like the guy who's gonna be out there from like killing the kills, and then you have someone like Tracer who's gonna <laughs> kill him, yeah, kill him all. Yeah, and, and then you have someone like Tracer who's I'm gonna damage, jump, warp, get over here, hurt them while Genji's going there killing, and then you have God. I you know, wish people could see Brian right now. I get these. into it, <laughs> and they can hear his chair. I'm afraid over. he's gonna punch me. Like he's like, Ooh. I'm just waiting for him to just I smack the mic off. <laughs> but no, it's just like, and, and that's why I'm so pumped because I I became a person now who's just more of a support now I, I don't like being in the spotlight I don't like get, I don't like seeing oh yeah I got like 30 kills I don't care about that I'm we, more of looking we, like we need people like you I, I like looking at my team like cool we won we did good awesome that's what I care You're about. You're a team player, buddy. See, I'm like I the exact now. opposite of that. Our team could like win by 100. I'm like, I only got 20 kills. Come on, <laughs> what is this table flip? More need to die. <laughs> don't be such a bro. <laughs> <laughs> No, but it's again, only, it's only I, the one game. I just, yeah, I, I'm kind of with you. I just like playing aggressively and yeah. combat's fun. It's more like fun for things. me. Like, yeah, that's like how I get. And, and, and I'm more aggressive. like Brian. I like to be able to do the kills. I like to be able to be helpful in that manner. But at the same time, you know, if I could throw down a shield, if I could drop a med pack, if I could repair a tank, if I could do something extra to make us get the wins and play the objectives. Yeah, well, and at least from what I've seen of like you playing WoW and stuff like that too, you're usually good at filling in the gaps where it's needed, you know. I try to, which is really useful. I mean, that's you know, and it's it's, it's hard to be adaptive. Yeah, in those kind of games, and that's you know, I like to play classes that are are, are adaptive. You know, maybe I'm not just doing straight out HPS. Maybe I'm throwing a bubble on somebody because you know what the the bubble is just as proactive as you know healing. It's yeah. not nearly as reactive, you know. If you're gonna take a twenty thousand damage spike, you're taking that fucking twenty thousand thousand damage spike. I'm not throwing that damn go goddamn shield on you. No, <laughs> you know, if you're gonna take it, you're gonna take it. I'm sorry, you know. I will try and throw a shield on you before that happens. But if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. If you can't get out of the way, get out of the fire. Yeah. Sorry, bro. That's all on you. Yeah, it's kind of like whenever I'm doing division because I'm the medic. It's like, okay, if you're gonna get out of my healing circle, that's on you. I can't get yeah, to if you. If you get out of the LOS, you're done. Yeah, bro. that's not my fault. You know, and that's game comms, bro. Game comms. <laughs> For sure, bro. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's I, I don't know. I, sw I, I switched my gameplay now. I'm, I'm I became very relaxed now, and I, I'm just not competitive as I used to be. You realize he wasn't good enough. <laughs> well, ever since you brought me down with Call of Duty, man. 
<laughs> you broke me. Kenny, just like Kenny Clark did. Spirits. <laughs> Spirit Breaker. Well, I always was a Vincent fan. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna have to show you guys at some point. I'm, this is a complete tangent here, but um, there's a, a thing called Second Life, and it's a lot like IMVU, okay. which is just this virtual uh, I know Second chat room. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. Is this that video? Yeah, it's a video. <laughs> show. Uh, I don't know if you guys know who Oni Ng is, but he's a classic Newgrounds animator, and like he does some like Let's Play stuff now too. But he put some videos on about him being in Second Life, <laughs> and his 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 character is this is like, like Tails from Sonic with boobs. <laughs> it's really funny. Oh, Lord. But he, he was talking to this one guy named Genesis. And oh Brian? my god, <laughs> just wait! <laughs> oh, so it is Brian. <laughs> Hold on! Whoa! So, this this was the most anime-looking dude you've ever seen. He's like decked out in armor. He's got this like long, so flowing white anime hair, and he's like talking all this stuff. And he's like, "I hail from the clan Valentine, the royal family." And I was like, "It's Brian! It's him! I found him!" Oh man! <laughs> I just thought it was so funny. I might have to get a picture of my MVU character up for you. Lord, <laughs> <laughs> but it, well, it, not to jump off onto that, but I'm just going to. But it's sort of funny because now like, we can't stop him. No, you can't. <laughs> no, he opened that door. But no, it's just more because like fuck. I think. <laughs> what, but, but I'm tying this in the game because like since I've been playing a lot of games that don't have good stories that don't pull me in, I'm now a person who's curating my stories. Where like I'm writing like an anime now and I'm working on other shit. I'm I actually want to have stories, so I'm actually doing stuff to build stories. Like I'll play GTA and. You know, I'll get together like you know. Sometimes how we used to do, we make skits within the yeah, game. Yes, I'm looking for story. <coughs> so if I don't have it, I will fucking build one now. No, it's fun to do, and I, I love role playing with games like oh, that. Oh, I do I think too. It's a ton of fun. But it's like what we did with Saints Row. Oh god, that was so much fun. That was. We fun. our story was better <laughs> than the actual story. <laughs> yeah, because the actual story was hot garbage. Yeah. But <laughs> well, the number two story was actually pretty good. Well, yeah, three number two was we fun. just don't talk about. All right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, three wasn't too bad. It was a good game. It was. Just, just, I mean, like. I, Listen, it, it's a fun game. If you go into the Saints Row game starting with Saints Row 3, you're going to love it. Yes. But if you had played the first two and then go back to it, you'd be like, what happened? Yeah, because the first two were so serious and so, like, you know, know, this uh, is what it is. The nice thing about the first two games is they were, like, they had the serious story with, like, the goofy aspects thrown about it, so it was kind of, yeah. you know, funny. And but this one, they just three. went full goof, which is fine if you want to do your own series of games like that. But when you're continuing off a game, it just right. breaks everything, yeah. and you're like, oh, what happened? <laughs> I, 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 I remember, like, calling you super angry when I found all this out. Like, I was pissed. Yeah. Uh, and I still, and I, we, and I, then I buy you, like, the season pass for, like, the fourth one, because I'm like, Mike, we're gonna fucking finish this shit to the end together. And I think, did yeah. I buy you the season pass? Yeah, you bought it for me, because, like, I bought the game, I was like, I'm not gonna buy a season pass. I'm buying it for you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going through this for you. <laughs> well, no, that's the thing, because I'm like, we're gonna fucking see this thing to the end. Because <laughs> uh-huh. I, I just felt like we, I, we well, at least we invested so much time into it. Yeah, we did. <sighs> My heart Poor bastards. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, whatever. Like I said, half the fun was just making our own stories and fun with it anyway yeah. same thing we used to do with toys and oh, yeah. smash bros and all that stuff oh yeah it's a ton of fun oh god it's it's probably one of the better things i like about video games is being able to create your own stories being able to rpg kind of yeah well yeah and i think that's <clears throat> what makes it so different from any other form of media is it's interactive you know you can change it the way you want it and that's why I love about video games so much, and I think that's a big reason now why when I'm playing games, it's usually not story driven stuff because like I just kind of want to play stuff. Because you're better way. at making your own goddamn stories. Well, there, there's that, but it's just even too where it's just like you know, make this game my own and exactly. I just want to play it. Yeah. Instead of like Final Fantasy Thirteen, <laughs> the game's playing itself, John. <laughs> the game's, the game's playing, playing itself, itself, John. <laughs> hey, hey, go left. <laughs> <laughs> I am going left. Hey, hey. Go, go right. right. <laughs> I just realized I haven't been using the right controller. <laughs> it's Jontron, folks. Go look him up. Yeah, he's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, we're reaching about an hour here. Are we got any, like, finishing final thoughts or stuff like that? Mm-hmm. Well, because, like, I mean, we're talking a lot about the negative aspects of it, but to be fair, yeah. there are... A lot of games that I think are doing it right. We we're talking about Dark Souls and how I think it's neat that, um, you know, a lot of game companies are trying to, uh, they're kind of watering down their games in terms of difficulty and a lot of other stuff just to, like, you know, appeal to a wider audience, which is understandable from, you know, a 
marketing standpoint. But games like the Dark Souls games that are so successful are kind of proving that gamers do appreciate a challenge. And, well, and it, harken, it really harkens back to the days when video games were actually hard. And I'm not throwing on some rose-tinted goggles and saying that. No, video games they were, were. They were actually yeah. difficult. I don't know if it was just because of the lack of information well, that I was out there. That's why they had they had to make them difficult or you'd be done. In the, right, they were yeah, so you'd be short. done, And then well, you couldn't do anything else. Yeah, Dude, straight up Mario, like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, Brian, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go watch Take a Wire. You'll see me as Luigi. <laughs> that's a different issue, though. You know, Brian but, just but that's, sucks in That's Mario. something that we we got to give credit where credit's due. You know, uh, video game developers, and are de- some of them are developing modes for games and add-ons for games because they've seen people going and making harder add-ons for their games that they've already created. So right, why yeah. not just throw it in there? People want some. Some people. The, it's not just necessarily a small niche group either. A lot of people want to play a harder game. Mm-hmm. Some of us play video games for difficulty because there's more reward when you yeah. succeed. I mean, yeah, I, when I played feeling. Dark Souls for the first time, that was awesome experience. Like when it you, feels good. It feels so good. I was like, oh, I feel like a yeah, man. Yeah, you you feel like you earn every bit of progress. I know, you and it's in that awesome. Game. Yeah, you work on one boss for three or four hours, and then you come back because you had to fucking take a break because you were tired of getting your ass <laughs> and you were tired of doing all of that over and over and over. And you come back three hours later, and you're like, you know what? I got my head level. And then you go back, and you're like, okay, this wasn't that hard once you beat it. And, then, and you go, you know what? A sigh of relief. On to the next thing. Yeah. It was really funny because, like, The Witcher 3, I don't know if any of you guys have played it yet, but, yeah. they're, but they're doing the same exact thing. And I love that because um, I just got into it. Well, I played The Witcher 2 and I just started the third one. And mm-hmm. wow, I'm just so impressed because I like it. The game warned you head up. It's like, dude, don't think you can just breezy through this game. There's enemies in here that are hard. Yeah. They're here on purpose. Like, the first time I was just kind of wandering around, I wandered into this graveyard and there was this, like, witch ghost lady who fucking murked me in one hit. And I learned, oh, I don't have, I don't, and it's based on your equipment that I didn't have strong enough equipment. I need to go over here and get good equipment. Well, and it's, it's not even her. just the equipment, too, because, like, different monsters have different weaknesses, so you can coat your weapon in certain oils that's, to yeah. take down different But enemies. it's just, it's and something that's, that's awesome, and, and this, okay, and here's the thing. Is that, not, that's not just to say that making a video game difficult isn't always making it better. Oh, yeah, no, 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 that, no. not at all. Yeah. Like, but, like what I was saying earlier, um, Kingdom's Antler was one of the best games I've ever played. It's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily a hard game. No. It just brought a lot of new stuff to the table. It Mm -hmm. just made a lot of the pre-existing stuff and RPG elements that have always been there new and exciting. And it doesn't have to be more than that. You don't have to make the game difficult for it to be fun. No, no, and I, I guess my whole point of just bringing that up is that there are developers who are kind of keeping in mind the aspects of video games that I think gamers really love the most, you know? And it's uh, it's interesting to see because I know um, you take, like, From Software, and, like, I, to me, they, they have so much uh, integrity because not only do they make those Souls games, but now they're, they're moving on to other stuff. They're not going to milk it anymore and, you know... Which is They've great done to what see. they wanted to do with it. They want to move on to bigger stuff, and I think like what you title deep down that they're trying to work on, yeah, with another company. But I think what it comes down to is you just gotta like vote for what you want with your wallets. You know, you gotta do. Yeah, you, you gotta look at the games that you're thinking about buying and do the research. Don't and say, like, don't just buy the AAA title because it's the AAA title. You know yeah. what? It's probably a reskin of the same last game you played a year ago or two years ago. Exactly, like Far Cry, <laughs> Assassin's Creed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, it, don't just buy it because it's got the name to it. Yes. You know, yeah. the only way that you're going to show a developer that you want new content or you want a new game or that the video game that they're producing sucks is by showing them with your wallet. Stop buying the game. Stop Ugh. supporting it because they're not going to do anything to change it. Yeah. And it sucks to say that because some of those games are a lot of fun. You know, I'm sorry. The, the mechanics for Assassin's Creed haven't changed since the first game. Yeah, they got a little bit tighter. They got a little bit better. But yeah. overall, it's just a reskin from one game to another. 
Mm-hmm. I totally agree with you. Like the, I, I think the only thing new that I really saw was now that like you would have to push triangle or circle. Like triangle goes up, climb up, and circle goes down. But that's like the newest thing I've ever seen in them. Past yeah. that, they're they the same thing. The only thing I saw that was new was like Black Flag. That was awesome. With the pirate which, stuff, which was awesome. It was cool to see that, and it was cool to see them take a, a lot of creative. Paths. Even though they just took it out of Assassin's Creed 3 and then made it its own game, but that still, it was something new. It was something awesome, but instead of, you know, then just the same shit that they did. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you don't have to make it difficult to play, though, to, to sell the game. Yes. And, like... Bloodborne, Souls, they all make it... It's difficult yeah. to some aspect... It's doable, but it's difficult. But we don't need... Uh, nobody needs to just play difficult games. We don't need difficult for it to be good. Everybody likes a challenge, don't get me wrong. I think, really, you just got The developer needs to be aware of what kind of game they're trying to make. Because that's something that I think has been very consistent with, like, all my least favorite games is stuff where they're just, like, they're not sure what they're trying to do, so they add a bunch of stuff, and they think, like, oh, this would be... Like, a lot of, like, a crappy 3d sonic games oh, like God. sonic boom and stuff where like well you you can do this now and you can do this or different sonic games like i ah, now you're driving a car for some reason and it's like <laughs> what are you doing you know what kind of game are you trying to make here like so you're right not every game needs to be difficult not every game needs to be story driven some do know what you're trying to make it doesn't have all have to be new said, no it doesn't have to be but at the same time, don't be afraid to innovate, you know? Yeah. yeah, and well, like what Brian was saying with Black Flag, you know, they took something from Assassin's Creed 3 and just expanded on it. <clears throat> something that was received a repos- uh, positive response and just expanded on it. And that's good. It's good to see that, but don't just do that. Put more into it. Make the game yeah. interesting. Put something, a reward on the end of it. You yeah. know, put the carrot on the stick and people will chase it. And that's okay. But don't make it a shiny carrot that's empty. You know, yeah, no, no what putting you're... gear on the end of it's... an expansion yeah. doesn't make it a good game. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's Know what you're making. And it's really funny, too, how just from a little bit of playing you can tell which games were made with love and which weren't, you know. <laughs> you take something like uh, the indie game. If you guys, I mean, you, I know you guys have at least seen it, but have you heard of Undertale or played any of it? Yeah, I've seen a bit of it, yeah. Yeah, it's an indie game that came out, and it's it's a very simple game in terms of gameplay and stuff like that. Like, yeah, it's very story-driven and stuff like that, but it's a super creative game. That, I mean, even love it or hate it, just going into it, you, you can tell the love and care that's put into it. Oh, yeah. Where there are yeah. other games, you know, big AAA games with millions of dollars put into it, but you're like, man, it feels so hollow. <laughs> and it feels like someone was like, this is a paycheck, I just gotta slug through this and get this game out, and... When you lose that passion, man, that's... You can tell somebody just put in their eight hours and it was done. Right, it's... Pretty much, yeah. That's when it all falls apart. And that's yeah. not to say that there aren't a lot of good games out there. No, there, there are. There definitely are. Just, uh, Fallout's a great series. Souls games are great. It, pretty much anything Beth- Bethesda's put out has been pretty good. Even great, to a lot of extent. You know. Yeah, well, they, they know the kind of games they make, and, you know, they're, they're good at what they do. You know, and, and it's okay to test stuff. It's okay to put out crap games. It's going to happen. It's just but... learning from it. That's something that Blizzard has done really well over the past 10 years. They've put out bad expansions. they put out good expansions. they put out bad patches. They've done things to the classes. They've done things to the game. And a lot of it has received a lot of flack, and a lot of it has been good. And some of it has just been downright friggin' great. And the downright friggin' great stuff is still in the game. Yeah, and that's why, like, I think, like, a lot of AAA titles are starting to listen a little bit. Because that's why, at least what I've noticed now, everyone's trying to do beta for this, beta for that. Test our game, make sure it's good. Like, I just tried out Battleborn, which I'm going to not buy. I know it's made by Borderlands, but at least when I was playing it, to me, I don't think it knew what it wanted to be. Because there was a point where it was like, you know, oh, play me like a shooter. Wait, no, no, stop, stop, stop. You need to stop doing that. We need to go mobile now. You're doing mobile? Cool. Stop doing that now. Go shooter. It's like, do you know what you're trying to do with this game? You don't, it doesn't seem like you know exactly. But at least I'm noticing, like, uh, I just turned out the new Gears of War 4 beta. Uh, wow. 
That commercial is friggin' awesome. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, but the commercial is friggin' awesome. I am never going to play that game. The commercial looks great. <laughs> no, no, no. And I, totally I cried a little bit. It was it was awesome. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. But, like, I, I'm kind of a little bit glad to see the games are, at least AAAs are trying to do betas to, like, test our game. Let us know from reviews of what you think. No, no, not yeah. all games do that, like Division, but a good portion of them are doing it. Like, Overwatch is doing that. Like, they had so many open betas and Again, betas for that. that's Blizzard, man. Because yeah. they know. Exactly. Because and they I, know if they listen to their fans in a lot of aspect, they can take some of that and tweak it and make it something in the game. Exactly. And that's what I love about that. Like, I'm glad to see that the that work that some of the AAAs are actually listening and working on them. And so I'm like, okay, here's your beta. Okay, cool. You said this is wrong. We don't care. We're still releasing it this time. Yeah. Listen to what here's you're saying game. and delay it. <laughs> yeah, delay it if you need to. Here's a game, please. Fork over your cash. Exactly. And, like, like at least with Uncharted, they did that. Like, Uncharted 4. It's just now finally coming out. They they had, yes, it was a limited uh, people that were testing it, but after they, after they told them it was wrong, they said, okay, cool. They delayed it for two, three months so they can work on it. And, and I love hearing that. That's why I love hearing when well, games that's where you see with Well, that's where you see with, like, uh, even even with movies like the the Suicide Squad, mm-hmm. that negative reviews. Reviews from Batman vs. Superman. Batman versus Superman. Oh, it's too dark. It's too this, do that. And now they're going back and, and reshooting, and that's costing them millions of dollars to go yeah. reshoot all that stuff. Because mm-hmm. now all that footage is going to get trashed. But that's yeah. probably a good thing. To oh, be honest no, yeah. with you. Because yeah, now I saw that they added Batman now into the story, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> and it'll be it'll be interesting to see. You know, it's more than likely a good thing because if they're going back and doing reshoots, there's probably a, a good reason yeah. as to why. If you see all the negative responses from a one movie that they made, more than likely that next movie is. Probably not going to be very good. Oh no, I agree. And like, uh, Suicide Squad does look cool, but I'm still worried about it because I think it's trying to be a Guardians of the Galaxy. That's just my opinion. Because uh, I, at least to me, I think I love DC to, to death. I read their comics. I have a huge now library that I'm building for them. Um, but it's just for movie wise, I think they're just doing catch up to what Marvel's doing. And like, Batman vs Superman is supposed to be their version of Avengers, and then you have their Suicide Squad supposed to be their version of Guardians. That's just what I'm saying because those were those yeah. were Marvel successful films. So now DC wants that too, and I, and I feel like they're looking at it in uh, a wrong light. Yeah, you know the thing that made Marvel so successful was the fact that they made characters. Yeah, well, yeah, they, yeah. well, yeah. They you took know, their time you had with the characters. Th- three well, Iron yeah, Man they, movies. They've before been building Avengers up their out. cinematic universe for many years. Exactly. Now. And just don't jump into the universe thinking like, no. oh, they'll catch up. We're just going to have it so comic book people know, like with the whole dark side shit and the Flashpoint paradox. It's like, okay, if you don't read the comics or watch the animated films, you're not you're not going to understand what the fuck is happening. Right. Me watching it with my girlfriend Jesse, I knew exactly what's happening. Like, oh, I know that. I know that. I know that. Holy crap, he has a girlfriend. And, and, then, <laughs> and then my girlfriend said next to me like I'm so lost I don't know what's happening and then the way home for an hour I had to explain what was happening right. and that's and you have to and I shouldn't have to do that yeah you have to understand that your girlfriend's response is the vast majority of the viewing audience out there yes because it's, they're not advertising it towards that niche group they're advertising it towards everyone and so I mean, but and that's everybody's where, that's going where, to see it and it's like well I don't that's get where this you that's see why there's so many why, negative reviews on all when this you look stuff. at it why wasn't Batman vs. Superman successful why was Deadpool so goddamn successful? Because they set it up, man. Yeah, they did. They set it up and they made it a good story, and you didn't have to be a comic book person to get it. Yeah, because they made it welcoming for everyone, and and, and that's what I don't think DC's doing. Well, right. cinematically, Deadpool was just a good movie. Yeah. <laughs> Batman vs Superman. I've, I've had so many things. I could fill up a whole podcast talking about that movie. Batman vs Superman only had theoretically one movie that comes before it, and it's Man of Steel. Yeah, I, 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 with that I can't even call it. Like, this is my thing. I, I don't think Batman for Superman is a good standalone on its own. It needs its other origin stories to help build it, like Avengers did. Like, right. if, like if you just saw Avengers first, you'd be like, whoa, what's happening? Well, it's like putting out. Uh, it's like putting out a. Uh, they put the end of the book instead of yeah. having you read the. first. It's like putting out Return of the King. <laughs> And no. then expecting everybody else to get it. And you know, exactly. it's funny, because maybe this is just me coming from somebody who is a DC fan and gets all that stuff. I could forgive so much of that 
movie, like, plot-wise. Martha! If it wasn't just a bad movie! Like, go back and watch it, please, I beg you. You'll see the scenes, it's like, one scene, next scene, next scene, kind of back to that other scene before, scene. There's no transitions! Dream like, sequence what the inside fuck of a are flashback they doing? inside of a yeah, dream sequence inside like of a flashback. Moving to scene, to sequence, to sequence, and you're like, this is stupid, like, this isn't a movie, this is just a series of and stuff like, happening. And, like, some of the it's, it's film mechanic, like, we get it, you know, like, in Guardians of the Galaxy, the whole plot only progresses because group realizes is that he has powers like we get it that will move us from one action scene to another one yeah. and it happens you know that's just a, a movie mechanic but when you don't have any justifiable reason why you're moving from one scene to the next it's just scenes yeah it, it's, no, I totally agree you like, might as well just release them as mini YouTube episodes <laughs> well, well see this, this is what this is this is my opinion like is, uh, Zack Schneider I, 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 me I think he's a great director but for this one he, he failed it I it's, feel it's, like when he was he's too dark he's too dark to do mainstream yeah, but well, the thing is, is, I think when Zack Snyder first decided, hey, I want to do Batman vs. Superman, he's like, okay, I want to make this great. But I think it was more of Warner Brothers was like, okay, cool, you're making you're making uh, Batman vs. Superman, we need you to throw in Wonder Woman, uh, you know, Flash, Cyborg, you know, get them in there. We don't care how, just fit them in there. And Zack's just like, uh, uh, let's shoehorn. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll figure it out, but okay. <laughs> it's another issue, they just shoehorn so many things in the movie, it's just well, too packed. It is. It's, it's, like, it's like the Zack Spider-Man Snyder's, movies. It's not to say that Zack Snyder is, is a bad director by any means. Lots he just didn't sign up movie. for his film. Uh, Sucker Punch was a great movie. Great movies, but those those comics in themselves and those stories, they are of a darker origin. Mm -hmm. Superman, I'm sorry, I don't care what way you spin it as a pre crisis, pre everything that, that is now just recent to Superman. He is not a dark character. He is not. Well, uh, what I was just saying before, like it's it's well, fine to have. He's pretty fucking brooding. It pisses me off. Sorry. Well, that's the thing. It, it's, <laughs> Superman should be in, crisis, in dark even... situations, but he's a heroic, hopeful character. That's he's kind supposed of to bring deal. you home. And in yeah. Batman vs Superman, first of all, he's this like mopey little bitch the whole time. Second of all, <laughs> it, he's got like if someone actually counted. He's got somewhere around maybe twenty lines in the whole movie. Somewhere around give or take twenty to thirty. He's the main character. <laughs> and he's got like twenty to thirty lines, and all of them suck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get the whole tone of the movie was just jacked because it's like dark the whole time. It gets super dark when it's Batman versus Superman. And then when like stakes are at the high. And, um, by the way, I'm sorry. There's spoilers. I'll put up a pop up later. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> by but then by the time Doomsday comes into play, when stakes should be at the highest, it's suddenly like that's kind of goofy now. Oh, who is this? Is she with you? I thought she was with you. We're friends now because you said Martha, which is which is kind of ridiculous <laughs> oh. because uh, Batman emails her and sets up the whole thing. Kind of. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. And then suddenly. It's, it's like, like, I don't oh, know. Bat Batman, is. you just, you massaging his dick. Yeah. Forget yeah. that you invited the yeah. woman to the party. <laughs> All right, now, I haven't seen the movie, and I don't care. Like, <laughs> you shouldn't care. Just yeah. listening to what you guys talk about it, it sounds like the worst movie ever made. Like, I can't understand was, a single thing that's happening. It's very, it's very stupid. Like, it's very like what, what could possibly be going what, on in this what, movie? What, it makes no like, sense. Like, like, I'm totally going to jump on what Mike's saying. Like, ed like editing-wise, I'm going to go full film on this. Like, like totally, like, aesthetic on it. Editing-wise, it was awful. Like, Mike was saying, you were just everywhere. You just keep and it kills boring. the pacing. It really does. And, like, and then they try to do, like, really fast, you know, quick fight scenes but the problem is the editing was so choppy it was so hard to keep track of who was getting hit half time half time I'm watching Batman Superman go into like this chapel thing I'm like who's <laughs> getting hit one, at, himself. at one point I thought they were hugging and kissing <laughs> but, 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 but no but the editing was so bad where I just saw like black blurs just going everywhere I'm like who's hitting who who's hitting the okay Batman no that was Superman okay. and, this, and this is something that Mike you and I were talking about this earlier is that um, in a lot of movies now you see this green or blue filter over everything it's to make this uh, darker kind of ambiance and look at probably one of the most successful movies in the last year star wars mm -hmm. no filter it's great uh, yeah it's a great movie i'm sorry yeah it might have been a word for word copy of a new hope but you know what they played it safe and it did it well and, it, and there's nothing wrong with playing it safe and that even goes for video game companies you know what if you play it safe Sometimes you produce some of the greatest games out there. I think Star Wars had to play it safe, at least for this movie. If they had the risk and messed with, up, it would have been With how bad. torched we oh, were yeah. from yeah. the prequels, you know, and 
Star Wars is on that like a very yeah. thin line. No, I, I think they had to play it safe. I think they did it beautifully. I, I get it. The plot's a little too close to a new hope. I completely agree. But the movie was so fun to watch. It was, oh, it was. a good movie. It was oh a my great god! Time. John and I were hugging and crying pretty it, much the whole goddamn was, time. It was the movie Star Wars fans needed for a very long time. And now I hope they get risky and do. Yeah, some now, now they've got some wiggle room, and I, I think it was going to be pretty cool looking. Yeah, you insane. know what? They got that Disney Disney money behind them, and I've got full faith <laughs> that I, I've got full faith that they'll use every last fucking penny of it. Yeah, and the one thing, like, so it's funny that you say it because I'm really glad that Disney is actually letting them do what they want to do instead of Disney being like, oh no, no no no, we want you to do this. Put Mickey's face in there somewhere. We don't care. I'm yeah. a little pissed that they retconned the ex- extended universe, you know, just because I'm a huge Star Wars nerd and. Uh, <laughs> You know, yeah, I don't, there are I, some really cool characters in there that you kind of did away with, but you know, whatever. I'm not going to complain too much because you know what, that movie really kind of restored some of the hope that I had for the franchise. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. after getting so badly burned watching the prequels, you know what? As a kid, I watched them because I didn't understand anything about character arcs or overall As plot. As a kid, you don't know what's good or bad. You it's just great. know you like Star Wars. It was a great movie. Seen Star Wars. Yeah. Oh, oh man, let's watch terrible. Anakin and Padme like giggle and laugh in Clone Wars for like a even whole though straight. <laughs> <laughs> even though half of that doesn't make sense. No. You know, but watching watching A New Hope, you, uh, you not A New Hope, uh, Force, Force, Force Awakens. Awakens. Yeah. You, you watch it and it kind of gets the same mystery that A New Hope kind of gave, gave you. Who's Darth Vader? What's going to happen next? What is this? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, there's there's the resolution. The uh, Star Killer base is blowing up. We know who Kylo Ren is. We don't know who Ray is. We're tr- still trying to figure that out. Mm-hmm. You know, is it, obviously Finn's going to live, but what's his extent of as to how is he going to play into this? Is you know, are he and Bo? Poe. 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 Yeah. Poe, are, are they going to be the new, like, kind of Han and Chewie, you know? Oh, my God, up? Han. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, my God. I know. I, 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 got I mean, so... he is, he is like, pushing 70. I mean, what? I mean he, <laughs> he had to go. Yeah. Honestly. Honestly. Like, he broke his ankle filming. I mean, that guy kind of had to go. I'm sorry, Harrison Ford. I love you, but. <laughs> well, the thing that killed me was that, like, like after Chewie watched, you know, Han died. Oh my he, god, dude! He got he was, <laughs> my heart Chewie strings. was quiet through the whole entire film. Like at the end, he was quiet. Like they gave Chewie no more lines. I'm like, oh Chewie. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <there's> <laughs> not lines anyway. <laughs> I, did, I did love though that after that Chewie just went Rambo. He went like full oh, yeah. Rambo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, Everyone dies. <laughs> <laughs> Because you, you, you know the background story, there, right? Yeah. Chewie Chewie owes Han a life yeah, debt. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. So that's why he gets mad. Because technically, Chewie, being a Wookiee, and a life that being one of the most important things to him, Chewie is supposed to die before Han does. So that's why he gets all pissed. That's why he goes all Rambo, man. He's got complete... For him, that is a cultural breaking. You know, you do not fuck with him like that. (laughs) <laughs> oh God, he's gonna be an angry Wookie. Yeah, he's got <laughs> every angry Wookie. Yay! He's got every reason to be pissed off and go all Rambo on everybody. I was. I just want to see a rated R Star Wars movie where just yes. Chewie snaps <laughs> and just Chewie like snaps. just like torturing people. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be a fucking Kill Bill. <laughs> You know, but that, that it, it was it was a good movie, and it was it was cool to see Ray kind of discover her power, discover this whole thing, and then there's no pain. real reason for us to believe that she is a Skywalker. She isn't a Skywalker. What, uh, I wonder if she's an Obi Wan. Oh, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've no, I've heard the theory. It, it's it's interesting. I don't know, honestly. Uh, it'll be interesting to kind of see. Yeah, I mean, we have no idea. They could go many ways with it. I mean, it kind of makes sense for her to be a Skywalker, the way that lightsaber called to her in such a distinct I way. I mean, th- calling Brian's theory there that... Um, oh, that, there's always an Obi-Wan with a Skywalker. Yes and no, but the, more with the, uh, the way that I read it out was that um, the lightsaber calls to her because it's Obi-Wan's regret and more of trying to atone for the sin of allowing Anakin to do the things that he did. Well, 
Do you really allow him to do anything? I mean, I mean he's not... <laughs> there is some credibility he needs to be held for. He was. Uh, I want to I hold myself for credibility for Anakin. <laughs> Kid was a dick. Right. Yes and no. Stupid hate <laughs> Christensen. <laughs> eh, some of that just um, comes down to character acting. From my <laughs> point of view, the Jedi are evil. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> go go to your room. <laughs> you need a time out, See, but that's the, that's the thing, though, is like Kylo Ren is like the Anakin we oh, should right, have gotten. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, he's moody, he's brooding, but not to the point where it's like whiny. Yeah. Yeah, but he was like a kid with a, te- with a temper tantrum. Oh yeah, he throws, he, throws a, he throws a temper tantrum, but you know what? It's not like to the point where he's whiny. I like him because, like, I just think it's neat how he's, he's like trying so hard to be dark, evil, and brooding, and yet you can see the good in him. You can see when he freaks out; he's not killing his own men. He's just like, take this console thing, yeah. Whereas I Anakin I just like goes full balls to the wall and kills all the goddamn sand people and the younglings. <laughs> well. And, uh, okay, can I just say real quick? <laughs> Ewan McGregor was probably the best part of the oh, yeah, by easily, far. Easily. And even him, like, there was one line where he's telling Padme about Anakin killing the like, kids. It's like, he killed the young man. It's just so bad. It's like, ah, uh, you and even you couldn't say that line. No. No. <laughs> and I'm sorry, like, you know, thank you, George Lucas, for giving us Star Wars, but you know what? You should have fucked off before you made the prequels. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just saying. Well, Gungans? Gungas? The Gungas. The Gungas. The Gungas. <laughs> I've messed up. <laughs> I think I've gone too far. <laughs> you were the chosen one. Actually, I did, I did, actually, I did, really did like that line, though. No, 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 no. <sighs> well, anyway, guys. Um, till next time. <laughs> till next time. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a big tangent there at the end. But, a little know, bit. It was, it was, it was, fun. It was fun. <laughs> we had some good times. We had some laughs. This was some tears. Th- thanks for having me, man. This no, thanks for coming on. I appreciate fun. it. Yeah, I'm hoping you can come on some more in the future. Again, there, there's no set schedule for these things. It's kind of whenever we have people available and we want to do a podcast, we do it. Um, and, and again, we talked a whole lot about video games today, too, which I'm completely fine with. This is a video game channel, after all. But hopefully this podcast can branch out to other topics and we can talk about whatever. You know? I don't know anything else. I don't know anything else. It's just video games and masturbating. <laughs> there's the next podcast. You know plenty of that. <laughs> what, <laughs> see, <laughs> see, you can come on out. And, you know, Masturbating? You can literally come on to that podcast. Ah, that up. Ah, <laughs> jokes. Know, we know, tell them. I don't know anything about that. Oh, yeah, okay. Tell that to your lube in your car. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about that. <laughs> Scratching head. <laughs> Plausible deniability. I've got it. Uh, yeah, thank you for coming on. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you, Octar, for your farts being with us all being lingering lingering but mostly thank you rob for showing up yeah whatever so uh <laughs> next time guys on the nft podcast more stuff will happen yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> live from you <laughs> <laughs> it's pickled womp stick